good. You look good in that frog hat. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> okay. So this is our replacement for Susan. This is Evelyn. Thank you so much for coming out. We are really excited about all the new things you're bringing to the podcast. You're so welcome. why don't you tell me about some of the ideas you brought us? We're going to play some two new games tonight. If you haven't done so already in the back, you can participate in our Mad Libs game so that you can win Jeremy the Pachydermy. He's our uh, episode's mascot. And at the end of the show, I'm going to select a winner, and we're going to read the Mad Libs out loud and reward the winner with a prize. The second game we're playing tonight, please join us in drinking, although up here we won't be participating in this game. Every time you hear the words Kickstarter, Robot, or Downtown, or see any of us touch our faces, please have a sip of your beers and drink lots. <laughs> So. Look at Seth. His eyes are like, he's like, I have no idea what I got into. No, okay. he's like, I've had a head start. Okay, so we'll do a practice. Robot, robot, robot. Robot, robot. Okay. Kickstarter. Okay. Robot, Kickstarter. Step up your Touch game, your guys. Come on. Downtown. They, don't they like start, they start sober, but they don't leave that way. Okay. Well, that's fine. We have a head start on them, so... <laughs> All okay. right, so we'd like to welcome our guests for tonight, Sarah Petkus and Mark Koch. They are with Robot Army LLC. They're uh, locals in town who have a successfully funded Kickstarter. And I'm going to start with Sarah because this robot here is her brainchild. Let us know about how you dreamed up this robot and what it's all about. So basically, this is a Delta robot. Um, traditionally, they're seen upside down, oriented the other way, and they're on assembly lines doing pick and place because they're really fast. So um, what I dreamed up, I... Um, decided to repurpose this robot for something a little bit more artistic. So I made a miniature version and put a RGB LED on the top. And I'm basically going to copy and paste this 100 or 200 times and fill a room with them. And they'll be interacting with um, bodily motions. So right now we have like the connect and the leap and they respond to our movements, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And Mark is the circuit engineer behind this team. Tell us about how you met Sarah and what you guys have gone through together. Um, in the early days of Sin Shop, which is the Las Vegas hacker space, um, I was holding it in my garage uh, get our, to get our group started. And Sarah was somebody who just showed up and started working on her pro pro on, sorry, <laughs> working on her project there. Um, and I knew what a Delta robot was already, and I wanted to build one for like years. And so I saw her building one out of coat hangers and cardboard, and I kind of lost my mind. And so we became best friends and started collaborating on. Uh, what the robot you see here. Great, and I want to congratulate you guys. Your Kickstarter actually raised 150% more than you were intending. So you sell starter kits, right? You yes. want to tell everyone wow. else a little bit more about that and what they yeah, can do. Yeah, how much did you raise? How much did you ask for? And how um, much did you raise? We asked for um, 10,000, which would be 100 kits worth of sales. Um, we got 250%, so it was about like around 250 kits, 200 to 250 kits. 25 grand? Yes. Oh, yes. So wow, like good job. <laughs> All right, get those kids rolling. It's, it's a big army. So yeah, we can potentially build um, another 200 robots for our um, installation. So yeah, for every kit we sold, we could afford adding another one. But um, the kit comes with everything that you see there, and all the code we develop, like including the Connect code, um, is open source. So whoever assembles a kit can follow along and build a robot and have it do all the crazy stuff that we have ours doing. That's great. And before I move back to you, I'm going to have you select one of these fortune cookies. Uh, you guys don't know since it's your first night here, but at Downtown Podcast, we have a cookie selected for the evening, but okay. it's going to be the fortune for Vegas Tech and downtown's entire week. And we're going to snake it's the through. the fortune for everybody here. Right. It's the fortune for everybody here. We're going to sneak through the audience, and you're going to play a game of telephone. Yes. Sorry, what? <laughs> She's dropping luck on it. We yeah. saw oh, her do that. Luck. She distracted you. Okay. Sorry. No, you distracted Pick me. Pick a place. <laughs> <laughs> so go, go, ahead, go ahead and select one, and later we're going to drop this in the back, and you guys are going to play telephone, where the first person is going to whisper the... Uh, the fortune, and we're going to see if it comes anything close to what's actually said when we get to the front of the line. Okay, cool. So go ahead. Do you remember the old telephone game? Can you whisper to somebody to else? Yes. Deal. Can I open it or? No, no. Unfortunately, oh. you can't. Sorry. I'm like, you can it's not it. your fortune. It's all of our fortunes. <laughs> so you did the important part, which is picking it out of this. Now, if you could please give it to our expert fortune cookie handler. Round please, of applause, guys. Please lower your head. Nice. Uh, so also on your Kickstarter website, you mentioned some really frustrating speed bumps when you were building this and going through your prototypes. Do you guys want to discuss you know, the hardships and 
something that you've learned, maybe a character shaping about the whole thing? Well, one of the challenging things about doing a Kickstarter, especially when there's just two people in your group, is um, you have to wear a lot of different hats. And um, we're both, we're nerds, we're good at doing like the tech related side of things, but um, learning how to do all the promotional stuff and the PR work and, you know, writing your own press releases and articles and whatnot right. and kind of pushing those out into the world in so many different voices. Um, it's, it's rough, it's rough getting people to listen to you. Right. So um, that was, I don't know, probably where I grew the most. Sure. And what about you, Mark? Oh God. Um, so I'm an electrical engineer by trade, but I had to do lots of mechanical engineering okay. things, which I kind of know, but I kind of have to teach myself as I go. And accounting. Like financial I know, accounting? I'm really good at QuickBooks now, which yes. is not something I really sure enjoy doing. More money so. comes in than goes yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Or just knowing where it easy. all went. Yeah. I think that's probably the whole entrepreneurial spirit. You're going to have to like take yeah. on all these different tasks yeah. that you probably weren't comfortable with at first, but yes. congratulations. So we actually have an idea, right? We want to see what this thing does, and um, we hear it can dance, and we have a so bad... So it dances? <laughs> well, yeah, yes. They're dancing. You know, you know who's a bad dancer? Who? Joe. Joe. Where's Joe? <laughs> Joe really is a bad dancer, though. What do you say? I think I'm one of the best, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think do you Joe think, could learn from this robot? Do you think this thing could teach Joe how to dance? Is that possible, or is it... <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. You know, if you dance as good as you look. Yeah. <laughs> don't feed. Don't feed his ego. That's why he's like this. I call myself jo uh, Fabi Joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so this thing is Junior's his name, right? Yeah. Okay, Junior. Do you mind maybe teaching our oh friend Joe how to dance? Oh wow. Yeah, you definitely are picking it up. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wow, that is really oh, good. Okay. And I think that's about enough. Okay. Um, that's all we can bear for this evening. So thank you guys oh, for yeah, coming thank and you sharing your project. I appreciate it, that's good. That was awesome. Yes! Okay. Okay, so this little floppy book is yours. Yes. Your new one. Yes. So oh, I don't know why I do this. is a good book. It doesn't matter. It's, it's floppy. It's tiny. What happened was I started writing a talk for TED. So I gave a TEDx talk last month. And as I started writing this talk on self-deception, what I realized was I had so much material and I had 13 minutes. Yeah. So See, this is the long version of the talk. <laughs> And I wrote it in six weeks, and you can totally get it on Amazon or yeah. online at Nook or wherever it is you might Right, yeah, I would, say, I would say start by going to YouTube, you Google your name, and you get the TEDx that you did at UNLV, which is really good, and then the expansion. So, but the only problem is with it, it says lies that we tell ourselves, yeah. but you, you don't have any flaws. No, of course I don't. Perfection, I yeah. totally perfect. I'm the only human in the world who doesn't <laughs> deceive herself. Okay, well, why don't you tell me about what it's like being so perfect? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> what I realized is that giving a talk on self-deception or writing a book or being a clinical psychologist, I teach psychotherapy, I teach a lot of theories of human nature, is that all of us lie to ourselves all of the time. And in fact, I believe that it is the fundamental reason that stops us from living the most fulfilling, authentic life that we could. Me lying to myself? Yes. Is preventing my own happiness? Yes. Yes, it is. I don't like where this thing's going. I know, and it's, you know, <laughs> it's not even happiness. I, you, you, none of you actually are gonna really wanna hear what I have to say because there's a lot of material about happiness right now in psychology. Everybody wants to know how do I get happier, right? right? That's what I want. I, I hate to tell this to you, but <laughs> if you're going to be more honest with yourself, you're actually going to feel worse for a while. For Just a while, like but good it tapers therapy. Off. Well, then the beauty is once you acknowledge that you're lying to yourself, you get to make different choices. And once you get to make different choices, hmm. then you enter into the realm of what actually is fulfilling for you and now that's what that. I hope for people okay so if you have a small business if you're a startup yes all of these brilliant are you people. is there things that you're lying to yourself that might affect how good your business does yes 
Yes, I got to think that there are. Now, I am not a small business owner. So you actually, if I could get you to the, tell the truth, would be able to tell me better than I can tell you what lies you tell yourself. But I am quite sure that all of you lie to yourself. Sorry, it's just the way that it is. And some lies that I could imagine Aww. people saying would be something like, if I have a good enough product, it's gonna sell. Well, maybe. I really hope it does, but I gotta think that having a successful business actually is a lot bigger than that. Uh, it could be self-deception around your own value. Like, this person had a really successful business this month and I didn't, so they somehow have something that I don't have. Hmm. It could be actually grandiosity. It could be something even bigger. I am the most brilliant, amazing person ever, so my business is going to be successful, independent of what I do to make that happen. Grandiosity? Yeah. That's a huge word. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's difficult, yeah. <laughs> But what about someone like Seth? Like he's this honest guy sitting in the front row. Like yeah, I just see that grin on Seth. his face and stuff. Is he even Seth lies to himself? Oh. I hate to break it to you. Seth, do you have a lie that you could actually tell us you have used in the past that you now know is a lot of BS? I'm very comfortable. I love that. Oh, that's the lie. That's the lie. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's stressed he's to the max right now. He's working on it. He's like, oh. I'm here. Oh, though. God. I'm I, didn't here. Even, I am so dense. I was like, how is he so calm? Like, I need that. I'm on the show, right? Okay. So, what about uh, how it affects me? When you lie to yourself, whatever your belief is, is going to affect the way that you live your life because it actually is a reflection of who you are in some way. It will affect the way that you act, the kinds of choices you make, consciously or unconsciously. It'll affect the way that you feel and your emotional state. It will affect literally every aspect of your life. And what I'm always gonna tell you and anybody else who listens to me is that I would much rather have you living based in the truth than based in a lie. Yeah, I think If so. you tell the truth, it's part of your past. If you tell a lie, it's part of your future. future? Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're killing me. Uh, so how do, okay, so first off, how do I find out, how do I find out what my lies are and which ones are the most important to like try to fix? And then how do you fix? Just give me the whole fix. Ha, I, you know, most people think I go to this perfect psychologist who doesn't have any baggage and is actually this very functional person who's no. going to tell me exactly what I need to do to be better. But she's lying to herself. Yeah, good yeah. luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Right. The truth is that really psychotherapy is an amazing gift that you can give yourself because one of our jobs as clinicians, as therapists, as psychologists is actually to hold up a big mirror and to really try to reflect what we see as an accurate reflection of the ways that you're lying to yourself, which is going to suck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest about that. But it's fundamentally going to help you. That is the whole entire purpose. That's so. Right. I believe that it takes a lot more psychological strength to go to therapy than it does to avoid it. And so I think it's a wonderful way to get to okay. understand yourself. Yeah, I, I probably agree with that. So, okay, so if you, if you, if somebody says like you are bad at something, like do you, are they probably right? It, that depends. <laughs> 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 that depends on who they are and who you are and why they're making that comment and what the circumstances. Well, why could they see things about me that I can't see about you know, me? It, I live in me. You know, it's so hard for us to acknowledge realities about ourselves. What I would say to you is this. Use your relationships to your benefit. If someone says something to you and your immediate reaction is no, 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 no. No, okay. I am not, 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 not like that. Uh, pause. Just, yeah. Take a moment and actually think about it. It may be that after some serious contemplation and examination of your behavior, of your thinking, of your emotional reactions, you conclude that's not really true of me or not hu wholly true of me. Yeah. But it also is probably a good indicator that it's partly true. And so when it's partly true, you have to acknowledge that. All right. How much does a therapist cost? <laughs> <laughs> like by the hour. Like is there discounts, government stuff we can look towards? You know, 
therapy can be really expensive. It depends on how you, if you have insurance, how great the therapist is. How many friends you have. How many friends you have. <laughs> sure, I don't know if that's true or not, but maybe, maybe you have somebody who would give you some extra bonus sessions. Uh, it can be really, really expensive. I fundamentally believe that it is the only relationship that you'll ever have in your entire life that exists solely to benefit you. Mm, gotcha. If you're going to spend money on yourself, that's a massive gift. Okay. And I did want to point out that uh, if you guys work for the Downtown Project or some of the entities, you have access to Turntable Health, which does provide... Um, well, kind of free. If you're, if you're in the system, it's free access, and if not, it's $80 per month for as many times as you want to go to see a session, uh, as many as you can fit in in the whole month, 30 times if you want. That is the most so, amazing deal I've ever heard of any organization ever. Yeah, let's hear it for therapy. Seriously. Yeah. For therapy. <laughs> Woo. We're going. Who's with me? Back to quad, I will yeah. be right there with you. I'll walk all of you into the office if you want. Oh, man. Poor Zubin tomorrow is going to see all of us out there yeah, waiting. All right. I'm ready. We all need I, therapy. I, I got yeah. it. All right. <laughs> Courtney said we all needed to be here. It's the best thing. We can only relationship yes. ourselves. Yes. Yes. All right. So what are the... Can you just uh, walk me through a story in your life? Like, when did you have that trigger happen that you were like, oh, my gosh, I'm lying to myself? And then, oh like, just so you could... Kind of tell us like the internal thoughts and maybe we could try to mimic those. Sure. Well, one of the biggest examples that I used in this book and in the talk that I gave, the TEDx talk, is that our self-deception often manifests in our romantic relationships, probably more strongly than anywhere else. Whoa. That's a different, Watch that's a different reaction. I know than we're I just get. dancing yeah. to a robot and now we're talking about our romantic relationship. Yeah. So one thing that I very much struggled with as an adolescent was I never felt safe. I dated lots of men and I chose those men very unconsciously based on what was familiar to me and what was comfortable to me, which wasn't particularly healthy for me. Biker guys? Ugh. <laughs> Anybody who was emotionally unavailable. <laughs> Biker guys. Oh, okay. Non-committal, any version right, of right. I just really don't want to attach because I fundamentally had an issue with attachment, which was something I couldn't have told you at the time. And it was because I, I had a sort of challenging childhood where I really didn't have kind of strong relationships with my parents. And so what happened over time, this is what I did. I would date someone and we would have this interaction. I would say, you need to do this, 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 and this so that I feel better. And guess what they would do? They would do this, 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 and this. And guess what happened? I felt exactly the same. Hmm. When that happens, oh. yeah. you have to look in the mirror. <laughs> right, right. Dylan, I no, know. That has no there. symbol. I, know. I was like, I know. I just learned from you. It's not my life. Yeah. And so I. Oh God, that's had that's what exactly you're saying. Hiding. <laughs> I had to really do a lot of self-evaluation to come to a place where I could actually have a healthy romantic relationship, and it involved a whole lot of honesty about what I was bringing to the table that I couldn't have acknowledged right. if I wasn't willing to confront my self-deception. Okay, so you see, so maybe just even go, is that because there's all these chemicals in our head? Is that a whole chemical deal? Oh boy, chemicals maybe, are I mean, definitely kind of in our head, Dylan. I think it's probably much more complicated than that. And yeah. certainly in the talk and in the book, I would tell you that you're going to be most vulnerable to lying in the areas in which you were emotionally struggling the most as a child. Whatever you learned as a child, mm about what's true or not true of you and people around you, you're going to bring with you into your adult relationships gotcha. because they fundamentally become a part of who you are. And in order for you to not damage and burden all of your relationships as an adult, you have to figure out what those messages are and how you're translating them into your adult relationships with people. Gotcha. And that takes a tremendous amount of psychological strength. And that is the reason that most people don't confront their self-deception. It's because it requires self-esteem. Because when you admit the truth, you're going to have a little tiny ego hit for a minute. It's going to hurt because you're going to have to see something about yourself that you don't like. It's worth it. But you have to have enough psychological strength to see it. I mean, we see self-deception even in the tiniest things. Santa Claus? 
No, that's Santa terrible, Claus. right? I mean, you must have dealt with that a lot. <laughs> It's this huge lie. What about something, any kind of rationalization? So oh, man, I didn't say, I didn't I say that on the web. I heard earlier something like, I'm not gonna ruin some kids. well, you ruined my diet for me because now I'm drinking beer. Okay, well, who's responsible for you drinking beer? Okay, so that was a lie. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes you feel like, yeah. But it makes you feel it. a little bit better because, like, like I'm innocent. You. Like, life made me drink this beer. Yes. I wouldn't have, yes. yeah. And I want to be like, well, it's not really true, but I'm going to let it go for the mm -hmm. moment. But if you want me to give you examples, there are millions of them. So, all, so all, people walk, like we should be walking into the psychologist and say, I don't know what's wrong, but I'm lying to myself by probability. <laughs> and like, can you help me? Like, is that legitimate? You know, the truth is that you don't have to be mentally ill or struggling to see a therapist. You don't have to walk in and say, well, probability suggests that I'm struggling or I'm really having emotional breakdown. You could go in and say, I actually want to maximize me. Yeah, okay. I want to be the just, best me possible. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's work on that. Ooh, awesome. That is Bravo. Awesome. I will applaud anyone who takes that life path. All right. Well, we know we have a resource around here we can use. And so well, tell me about the website before we let you go. You've got choose honesty.com choose honesty.com i write a blog for psychology today if anybody's interested in psychology yeah oh i didn't even touch it and then you dropped your tenure because you wanted to just I go explore did. the world you right? know what happened was i got tenure and then i had to ask myself a lot of self-deceptive questions about why i wanted to stay because the truth is i thought about my life and i thought well i'm going to run a research lab for the next 30 years and i'm going to write grants and i'm going to make a lot of money to put into my research program, and I'm going to write articles for peer-reviewed journals that none of you will ever read in your entire life. Is that fulfilling to you, Courtney? No. Oh. Make an impact, yeah. And then once you admit the truth, you actually have to do something with the information. You have to make a choice to change or not. And if you run out of money, you're going to be OK with it? And I quit. OK. You know, the good news for me is that at the moment, I have a lot of financial support from my husband, so it's not, the financial part is going to be okay, at least okay. temporarily. We'll figure right, that yeah. out as we go. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> See ya. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. yeah that was fun. <laughs>
A cupboard. So <laughs> the larder is basically what was in the house to keep the storage cold before the refrigerator. And they would build houses, you know, with the larders, like a pantry kind of, away from the sun, whatever. So that's what a larder is. And then after 1927, when the refrigerator was invented by General Motors, they went away. And then so did the tradition of putting the cloth in the larders. But the pillow on the refrigerator has come back. So Dylan, we must get a pillow on your refrigerator immediately. Like yeah. now. Exactly. I want to see it happen. I know there are pillows in, on the couches back there because it's good luck and wealth and it only happens today. Today only. While Dylan working on that, we're going to get a camera on him. I'd like to talk about June, which is just a few days away. June happens to be Entrepreneurs Do-It-Yourself Month, Marketing Month. Who, who here is an entrepreneur? Yeah, a lot of you. I, I suspected, yes. Well, this guy right here with Dot Vegas, a company that I'm just learning about, that I'm becoming very obsessed with, is all about the entrepreneurship and the marketing and the do it yourself. This is Dusty Trevino. I like right. saying it, Trevino, <laughs> yes? Yes, yes, that yes. is correct. Yeah, and what, what this means what in Italian? Uh, Trevino is three wines. Three wines. Three wines. Let's Can't... taste your, your Italian, let's test no, that's your not, Italian that's wine a, knowledge. That's a, that's Can you name <laughs> three Italian grape varietals? Red wine? Yeah. Is that one? No. Okay. I have no idea then. <laughs> Your last name means three wines and you can't, you can't name. Let me help you. San Giovese, okay. which is what's in the Chianti. Okay. We have a Nebbiolo, Merlot which one? is a what? Merlot. Merlot actually counts? Yes. Yes. Good job. No, that's better. That is bad. Good job. Yes, go. yes. And okay, so we're over that now. Okay, so you are the, uh, the CFO of yes. Dot Vegas. That's correct. Yes. Now, yes, sponsors tonight. Yes. Very good. Seven years bringing Dot Vegas to, to market here. Let's talk a little bit about the education because these guys are the sponsors for the next four months, once a month. Come on! Yes. Yeah! Wow! I did not mean to scream that much. I'm sorry. So um, let's 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 have a conversation here. Absolutely. So we got um, yes. So uh, do you guys know what a TLD is? TLD. Do you know what it is? Oh, you're all just so fancy, all you tech Vegas people. I know what it is, whatever. I didn't know what it was. All right, so can you give them a little bit of education on the TLD in general? Sure, and, and like they said, yeah, a TLD stands for top level domain. And, and a top level do domain is anything that comes right of the dot. So and everybody's familiar with .com, .net, and .org. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. a top level domain. Well, for the first time, the governing body of the internet, which is ICANN, has, is opening up the space. And so we applied for and were just awarded the top level domain dot Vegas. So now, just wow. like a .com, there'll be a dot Vegas. And on how the many cities are there in the U.S. that have their own dot city? There are four cities. Four only. Do you realize yeah, how special four. this is? This is a very big deal. Yeah. The, what, what, are the, what are the other the, the cities? The other three besides us is dot NYC for New York City. Dot really? Mi really? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I just want to make sure. I just okay, want to make sure. Dot, dot Miami and Dot Boston. Okay. All right. Those are good cities, but yeah. it's not. But, not, but it's Vegas. not Vegas. It's not Vegas. No, no. We're, we're the best. Yeah. No, we are for sure the best. So now I hear that a lot of uh, major brands and companies like Google and Amazon, they're 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 jumping on this because they see what's happening. They're like, oh my God, there's all these new TLDs, and they're snatching them up. Like Google bought over a hundred. I heard recently. Like yeah. they have Dot Mom now and Dot RSVP. Yep. So like, what's what's up with this new revolution in, in in the dots. Well, like I said, I mean, we really are kind of what we consider like a fracturing of the internet right now. I mean, dot com has been the dominant. They're kind of what you consider the, the white pages of the internet. Everything mm -hmm. would go into that. Now they're trying to fracture and actually create categories and, and uh, brands within the, within the top double domain space. And that's where you're seeing this come out of now. Now I hear that people involved in the tech industry are very excited about a lot of the heat and the energy you guys are like creating. I heard like 900,000 possible registrations for dot vegas like what is this we, we hope i mean that'd be excellent yeah i mean we are getting quite a bit of excitement around the dot vegas top level domain we've got uh, quite a few founders program basically uh what we have are founders coming in and and asking for specific names that we're working on with and yeah a registrar which is like a GoDaddy mm -hmm. or an enom or a one and one where you typically buy a domain name from um one of the largest registrars yeah anticipates us having potentially 100 or 900,000 wow. names in our database which if that's the case would be excellent for us and that would be you amazing. know it'll take us a while to get there, but it, it's a possibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lot of excitement. So here. now something is happening on Monday. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, so Monday is actually our official launch date. Official launch date on yes. Monday. <laughs> yes. So yeah. 
uh, now, now it is somewhat of a restricted period. It's, it's a 60 day period, what's called a sunrise period. So it's only for trademark holders, uh, again, large corporations that want to come in and protect their brand within the .vegas uh, domain namespace, they can come in for 60 days. After that, then though, we will be open to the general public, what which, day is, which is gonna be August 15th. August 15th, yeah. everybody can have a .vegas. That, that Who's point? gonna get one? Hopefully everybody. I mean, come on. Yeah. A couple yeah. more hands. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have like months to go, yes. so there's a lot more to talk about, which I'm very, very excited. Um, so you have you brought shirts for everybody? I did, yes. There's, who's who's going to get a Vegas shirt? They're, they're there's, here. There are free shirts in the back, free so help yourself. Free shirts in the back. How nice is that? That is so sweet. All right. So um, we're going to see you next month, yes. which I'm very excited about. And uh, by the way, did a pillow? I don't see a pillow on the fridge. <laughs> there isn't a pillow on the fridge yet. Where's Dylan? He disappeared? There is one on the fridge? Oh, it's, it, oh, it's so oh, nice. I like that. Good. That's going to bring you good luck and wealth. I like it. And then lastly, if you're following me on the Twitter or I've been talking about um, tonight for my happy video, which premieres here at Downtown Podcast next Thursday night, uh, we're going to go on the Ferris wheel. So it's very, very exciting. Yes, yes, yes. So if you want, if you're down to come to the Ferris wheel tonight, please talk to me. If it doesn't work out, then we might actually just shoot at the roof here at the Ogden and have you just dancing and being happy. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Dusty, happy Thank you. holidays. so cloudy, Dylan responded, I love the people, the energy, but most of all the chickens. When I think about all that, I think I could live quickly ever after here. I also love all the great startups it draws. The newest startup to join the community is called 3.14 Launching Mushrooms. Their team created a smartphone app to help users searching for raptors connect with people who already have an abundance of them and are willing to give some away for free. So our winner is actually coincidentally our guest for tonight, Mark Koch. Um, yeah, it sounds like a coincidence. Yeah, that's a coincidence. You know why I chose it? He chose pi as the number instead of, you know, numeral. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Our last segment is for